Hey everyone, I'm back with another episode of the Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke, which has frozen. There we go, everything is fine. Um, which I am really loving how much I'm getting into. <laughs> I was not expecting the time to fly as fast as it has been. I've been recording for like 40 minutes at this point, and I was expecting to be like totally done with everything, but like, I totally want to see where this adventure goes. I totally want to like keep doing the thing that made me happy for so long, so long ago. So hopefully this is at least like semi enjoyable to everyone watching. Um, I feel like at this point you're giving it the three episode test. Uh, thank you. That's that's how you know if you're really gonna like something is if you can actually like stick through it for that long. You know, hopefully I can win you over here in this freaking forest with freaking bug boys. He's got four wormple. That's that's a lot of wormple. I, I think I think that's the correct um, pluralization. I think all Pokemon are are singular and plural are the same. That's that's how I've always said it, and I've always felt weird about it. Um, but but I contend that there's one Wurmple, two Wurmple, one Wingle, two Wingle, uh, one Pokemon, two Pokemon. Oh, and you're just supersonic. Look at you. Look at you being semi useful. Also, am I am I lowing run am I lowing run on on water guns? I've got eleven left. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna run back to the Pokemon Center after this fight. Uh, gotta love Nuzlocke. I am like just set out from this city. I've just been attacking so much because everything is so low power that I'm gonna have to restore everything. That's funny. That reminds me. Um, I did a uh, quote-unquote challenge playthrough of Omega Ruby uh, over the summer. I didn't put it on the channel, but because it was like on a non-pirated game, and I haven't figured out how to like cheaply record those yet. Um, so, I, I was running through with a Shedinja, which is this Pokemon that, like, is, is immune to some attacks, but if it's weak to it, if it's one of, like, the one-third of attacks that actually hits it, it immediately dies. And I was like, wouldn't it be fun if I did a playthrough with, like, that and uh, Slack Off, which is the, the first evolution of that, um, doesn't hit every turn Pokemon I was talking about in, I think, the first episode? Um, so I, I was like, what if I just got a bunch of gimmicky Pokemon together and made a team out of them? Wouldn't that be fun? And here's, here's the thing. You can't catch either of those before about this point in the game. So I started off with, I think I, I chose Torchic. Yeah, I got a female and I was, I was sad to let that go because there's only one in eight chance of the starter being female. Um, but anyway, I, I got to this point in the game. I caught the slack off and I was like, all right, let's go. Let's, let's do something wacky. And that boy is so bad in in every way. Like Slackoth just cannot hold its own. I, I would say it's worse than Wormple at this stage. And like I white it out like three times and like I cannot remember the last time before that that I white it out in a Pokemon game. I everything fainted and I just like lost the battle. Um and that happened so many times and everything was like posing such a threat to me. Ugh. So, you know, in a Nuzlocke, at least, um, I'm not using the best Pokemon, but I'm not using, like, definitionally the worst Pokemon. Um, you know, like, everything, Mudkip's a good one, and everything else I have on my team right now is pretty, like, low to middle tier, I would say. Um, but it's, it's not like I'm building a competitive team. And, like, just by virtue of being a player, I have a lot of advantage here, um, I, I'm very faithful. I just by virtue of, <laughs> of being a real human being, uh, going up against AI. Even if I'm not using held items, which is new for me, I, I usually do use them in Nuzlocke's. Um, oh good, that's my watch inevitably going off and picking up on the mic. You know, I, I have the, the capability to just like set aside a few hours. I guess now I do. Have the capability to set aside a few hours and make my Pokemon absurdly strong because this is a level based RPG. Um, and just just take down whatever. Like like honestly, this team can always win if I put in enough thought. Um, and yeah, that was my watch going off because it's 1pm as I'm recording this. And it does that every hour, which is a ton of fun when you're trying to fall asleep late at night. <laughs> um, I, I got this thing so that I could go on. Um, spot the uh, Stanford pre-orientation trip where you're just like out in the woods for a while with a bunch of people you've never met hiking backpacking doing whatever um ton of fun loved it like honestly I think it was the best way I could have started my college experience um and I'll talk more about that later but I got this watch for it um so that I could like tell like vaguely what time it was um because that's just like not a thing in nature and I would like to know 
if I should like get out of my tent because 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. look exactly the same and I have no idea if I'm gonna be like holding the group up um, so yeah that was that was a ton of fun um, the the people that I met on that group I, I stayed in touch with for like the the whole first quarter I haven't seen a lot of them in a while but if I run into them in any of my classes then like those um, and like it was it was so good we um <laughs> we found this pineapple at one point um we didn't actually find it but so what what happened was we're a bunch of stanford students we're allegedly very smart very knowledgeable about the world we understand what's going on in it um so like you you wouldn't think that we would fall for for stupid tricks um our trip leader okay hold on yep lot, lots happening my my dog has decided to leave the room that's he, he's very dramatic um this always happens when a pokemon's evolving this is this is the second time that i've i've done something and it's been something that i like want to keep on camera um yes cool i got the good one too um would you like to say anything <laughs> He's very subtle. He's a, a subtle boy who I am going to try to capture on the webcam. There he is. Oh, he's lovely. That was her mouth. So anyway, our, our trip leader was also this, you know, very knowledgeable Stanford student who spent the entire time talking about, like, you know, pointing out plants on the side of the trails and, like, showing us how to, like, dress wounds and, like, pulling out all of this super practical knowledge um, that only an experienced woods person may have. Uh, so when one day we were hiking and we, we found this like weird, suspiciously pineapple shaped bush on the side of the trail, we figured like, oh wow, that, that's interesting. What do you think about that, Christina? And our leader Christina is like, oh my God. And she just like goes into this whole tirade about how there was allegedly this uh, pineapple farmer nearby the national park we were in uh, who thought the volcanic soil would be great for growing pineapples. So he he did that and he started like growing pineapples nearby. And um, since he didn't really take care of the crops, they just ended up everywhere. So they're considered a an invasive species and we should actually try and remove it. So we have this excellent video. It's so good that someone brought a camera of, of Christina like, pulling the pineapple out of the dirt and like passing it around to all of us and like we're like oh my god i can't believe this is happening and um you know there's there's all of us who are like i didn't know pineapples grew underground um and just like completely like playing into this because of course we would we we trust her she's like <laughs> the first like um like older sibling figure that we've had out here um and so we we spend the entire trip believing that we had found this pineapple in the soil and the last night all of the um all of the camping groups uh came together in the same place and we ended up um oh cool bullet seed and we ended up uh telling stories about our trips and of course my group is coming in hot thinking like oh we've got the end all be all we found a pineapple and before we even get the chance to bring that up like we're talking with this other group and they're like, oh, did you guys find the pineapple too? And we're like, um, um, yeah, we were, we were the ones who found the pineapple. We we're, we're that legendary group that you must have heard about because we're so cool. Um, and they're like, no, that was, that was a trick. And we're like, there's no way. Like we, we retold the whole story about the farmer and we're like, you know, so dedicated to the cause of being like, no, this is a real thing. This is absolutely pineapples grow here because a man like went out of control with the volcanic soil. The volcanic soil, guys. And they're like, no, we, we were told that like fucking Santa put it there, you know? Like, uh, oh good, another chance of catching a Poochiana. Um, so we were like, yeah, yeah, it's it's gotta be real. And then these guys like completely pull the rug out from under us because like their leader didn't have as cool of an origin story for the pineapple. Um, and so, we <laughs> were like almost in tears we're like kids who found out that the tooth fairy isn't real we go back to our spot leader and we're like was the pineapple a lie she felt so bad she was just like yes there, there we put that there um but luckily the truth was even funnier than the fake story 
because apparently our other leader, Nate, had kept the pineapple in his backpack just secretly for the first like four days of the trip. And then when the time came, he woke up early in the morning, he's a cross country runner. So he, he sprints down the trail, uh, carrying the pineapple like, like he's in a relay race or something. And he ends up falling spread eagle on the trail, uh, dropping the pineapple hoping it wasn't ruined and then like jumping right back into action planning it there running back to us um and the best thing about nate is that he is like the purest christian boy that you will ever meet and so he couldn't tell this story without like giggling through the entire thing and we were just shocked that they they had managed to keep it a secret for so long um and that was that was like one of the best intros to stanford i think i could have gotten uh anyway i've finally caught uh, Puchiana. Um, I think I'll use it on my team. It's getting a little bit crowded on here, but good to have some type diversity. Uh, I'm naming this Ada, and that is the name of my uh, resident fellows dog, who unfortunately passed away recently. Um, she was a German Shepherd, not looking super like the little one that I just caught, but uh, she was she was a lovely presence in the dorm. She'll be dearly missed, and hopefully this thing doesn't die. <laughs> that was a lot of good content. Right? Wasn't wasn't that some good content, guys? Didn't you enjoy me talking about that? Now I'm all out of things to talk about. So, what 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 would happen a lot in um, my like medium experience Let's Playing days when I was like in the swing of it, but not totally like into its final form yet? Um, I would I would just like release these like 10 minute episodes that were all one take, all and, and that makes it sound like I rehearse these. I don't. Um, but just like all directly streamlined, like I would literally take the video and upload it. Um, and the thing about that is no human being sitting by themselves, with very few exceptions is actually interesting to listen to for 10 minutes straight. So it, it took me a while to get into the sort of like best of situation that I'm in now that, and that I think I'll be repeating for this, depending on how much time I have, like Maybe there will be a big drop in quality in the episodes because online classes are going to start back up, but I don't want to abandon this. Maybe I'll just play like hours a day between now and then and I can actually like finish in that time. I'm not sure exactly how the, the editing process will go, but I'm thinking that I will be um, taking out some of the parts where I am staring blankly at the screen and button mashing because... You know, I, I can be a somewhat self-aggrandizing person sometimes, but even I realize that is not good content. Is not is not something that, that people are gonna want to listen to. Also, I should have closed my door. <laughs> it's it's such a rookie mistake. Also, I have not been paying attention and okay, good thing Oval has the berry because I might have just let it get eaten by this zigzag. <laughs> Um, I think that extra health is going to be good, though. And honestly, I am now winning the War of Attrition. Please just get poisoned. Please just get poisoned, Zigzagoon. Come on now. Ooh. Sorry, I... I don't think I ever get more ADHD <laughs> than when I am doing this kind of thing. Like, normally, I have a very, like, solid attention span. There's the Fuller story that I was talking about. He... <laughs> He pulled it out at exactly the right moment. Normally I've got a good attention span. Normally I can like, you know, follow a conversation if I'm like speaking with another human being. But when I'm left to my own devices, I will literally just say whatever comes to my mind and lose whatever train of thought happens to be there. Um, and when I saw a spider on the other side of my window. Um, but yeah, this, this Zigzagoon is doing a number on us actually. I was just talking about how I was about to beat him and then Tap has missed tackle twice in a row, which is like a 95 power move. Um, I guess I'm getting payback for my crit luck earlier. There you are. There she blows. Okay, critical hit right when I didn't need it. Perfect. And negligible amount of XP for everybody. <laughs> Why couldn't I win? Because you have a single Zigzagoon. Which I have not encountered a single one of, by the way. That's crazy. Normally those rats are all over the place, but... There was not a one in this playthrough so far. Should I or shouldn't I? Okay, sure, I will battle. All right, thanks thanks for that great dialogue. I really know a lot about you as a character. The NPCs in Pokemon are so fleshed out. And now I have officially <laughs> succumb to uh, the video game logic trope. 
Okay. Also, I just noticed that Ada has Howl, and I should really be using that way more often. Um, because this Lotad probably can't do jack to me, especially going for Astonish, which I resist. Ugh, if you have more than one Pokemon, you're about to get swept. Um, but yeah, I... Oh, he has Growl. Shame. I, I do treasure these games, and also I acknowledge that they are far from perfect. <laughs> but there's... There is so much to love about Pokemon, and so much to obsessively know, as you can tell from my, like, I don't want to say encyclopedic knowledge, but the fact that I've just casually listed off so many, like, random facts about this game. Um, and that's that's really without me, like, trying to show off. <laughs> like, that's just what I come in knowing. And, okay, here's Shroomish Destroyer of Worlds back again. We're going to try to go for another tackle and hope he doesn't absorb us. He's absorbed us. I, I swear to God, grass types are so... Okay, yep, yep, yep. Grass types are scary when you don't have a fire starter. All right. Whoo, a twisted fire starter. That is what I wish I had right now. All right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. First red zone. We we made it there, folks. I've been like, not... Not playing stupidly, but I could definitely be more smart, because I'm realizing that, like, there's a lot of solid beginner moves uh, that they give to you at an early level here. Like, Ada's got an attack boost, uh, Luft can confuse things, Oval can poison things and make them slower. Uh, and meanwhile, <laughs> Tap is just chilling there. Like, starters don't get, like, the smartest moves, they just get really good stats, so that you have something that can just, like, thoughtlessly ram through everything. Um, which is honestly wonderful, and why I will be depending so heavily on it. I'm just going to go do this uh, double battle, and then we will call it after that. Um, these are Mia and someone whose name probably rhymes with Mia. Oh, no, Gina. Okay, okay. Not not quite, but close. Uh, yeah. And these were revolutionary, by the way. When the game first came out, everyone was like, What do you mean you can use two at once? <laughs> Um, okay, so we are going to poison, hopefully, this CDOT before it can use Bide. Uh, probably going to be focusing mostly on the Lotad, because he is astonishing and flinching me. Okay, cool. But you use Bide without needing to, and now we can just poison sting your friend and completely ignore you. Now that Ada has done the equivalent of a swords dance. Don't flinch again. You're a strong and independent woman. You got this, Oval? Yes. Ugh, destroyed. <laughs> nice. It's always so fun to see these things become competent. I say, at level 7. Alright, and get wrecked, CDOT. This might actually end you. Nope, definitely not. Oh, damn it. Alright, that is Gina and Mina. Nope, Gina and Mina <laughs> defeated. Um, yeah, and it's been long enough, so I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.